This is getting into the side imaging part of how to set it up. Match our boat speed again. Adjust your sensitivity to show the level of detail. Adjust your coverage area. We're going to talk about slow, steady, straight boat speed. The slower, the steadier, the straight that you can run, the more detail. If you want maximum image, slow and straight is going to be better. If you do curves, it, it will distort the image a hair, but a slow, steady turn, like on a trolling motor, you can create a picture-perfect image. The, a change in speed is more detrimental to image quality than turning the boat. Choose the color palette that's best for your eyes. Not, I mean, I, my personal preference is blue, but we have a wide variety and everybody's eyes are different. Uh, side imaging enhances is, is a awesome hummingbird exclusive. Basically, it's the ultimate fish finding tool with side imaging. This is basically showing us distorting the image, cranking up our chart speed. This is probably one of the, the number one thing that I see people do wrong. As they run their chart speed fast, my fish returns are long, <coughs> my data is all stretched, I don't see a lot of my detail is missing from here. Matching this chart speed to this boat speed will give you a lot better detail in your image. As we can see in this next image, you can actually start seeing all those little rocks, the bridge pilings, exactly how they are represented there, and the fish in the exact shape that they're represented. You can see the fish here and the shadow from the fish. Basically, it's just like taking that flashlight. When it hits that fish, that sound wave can't travel any farther. It goes back to the unit, so it creates a shadow behind it. Same thing with the bridge piling. It's, these are, this is a bridge above the water, so that that line would go for affinity because it's, there is no sonar. This is one way you can check your horizontal aperture of your transducer if it's cocked too far down or too far up. This, this is going to look like it's leaning in here because this point is closer to the boat than the bottom is from the south. Point. You do not want this thing leaning this direction. If it's leaning this direction or leaning this direction, when you parallel it, that means your transducer is either cocked down or cocked up in the back. And it's not, it's not perfect critical that you have to be perfect horizontal, but close. Now, is that a, an old piling that's chopped off, or is that a... This is, if you go across Southern Highway on Truman Lake, this is Long Shore Bridge that you drive across. How come you don't see the piling all the way up to the top of the water column there? Because I'm a weight, I'm, I'm not next to it. This distance from here to here is the distance I drove away from the pilot. If we were looking at 110 foot, if we were at 37 foot, I was probably 20 foot away from the pilot when I drove by it. It's a distance still to the side. Okay. If, now, if I ran my boat into it, it would, hit, it would come to the center line. You'd know where it was. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it comes to the center line, you hit it. This is showing sensitivity at one. This is your lowest set. This is actually hard rocks here. This is mud bottom. Mud bottoms are always going to be darker returns. Your rocks are going to be a stronger white return. <coughs> this is showing your sensitivity way too low. The thing going through this, I'm adjusting these by the just moving them up one to four to eight to twelve to show bringing that sensitivity up. We'll start. We'll start finding better, more detail, finding the fish. We go to eight. We're starting to see the detail a lot better. It's still pretty dark. Now we go to 12. Factory default's 10, so we're in between this. The detail has really gotten a lot more crisp. Start seeing the school of fish here. If you start watching, there's going to be a whole bunch of little white dots all over this. This is actually the dead water channel below the Truman Dam, and there was 50 boats in there with three people in the boat, and they were yanking crappie out about that big. See all the white dots starting to show up. You can see the school a little bit better. We're getting a little bit strong because we're, that strong return there is starting to hide some of our detail on our rock. We go to 20, we just blew it out. So crank, so too much sensitivity. If you're looking for structure here, is going to be detrimental to your to finding fit. If the fish is sitting here, you wouldn't see it because the rocks are going to overpower. 
lakes like Lake Mills are, typically you're, that are more hard rocky bottom, you're going to run your sensitivity down lower. On mud bottom lakes like Truman, you're going to run your sensitivity a little bit hotter. It's, it's, and it's variable by the color palette you're using. Uh, blue is a, is, is, tin is pretty much dead in the center, good, good contrast, not great. Uh, pretty much a great place to start with it. Your amber one, amber two are a hotter color palette. Green is a hotter color palette. If you shoot it at 10, it's going to be brighter, so you can detune those a little bit. If you're in a hard, rocky bottom lake, the brown is a good one because you can run your sensitivity a little higher and the color palette is going to tone it down a little bit. This is, this is basically setting it back to the That gives you a good balance between hard and soft return. This is showing what the effect of coverage area will do to your sonar area. We're looking at, we've set it up to 122 foot to both sides. It's, it's settable up to 240 foot to look to either side. You can see this school with the shadow from those fish right down here off of this rocky wall. This is actually no soil scattered grass here. It's actually a drop. It's actually dropping off on this side, dropping off in the creek dam. But as we start reducing our coverage area, watch the size of this data here. The school of fish gets bigger. Our shadows are getting bigger. It's becoming easier to see. We go to 80 foot. Those returns got bigger. They're, active, they're starting to become more easy. We can actually start picking that school up and the returns from it. We get down to 60 foot and they're a lot easier to see. So using that area of coverage and bringing it in when you find those fish will make it easier to see what size the fish are, how many fish are in that school. Uh, is it bad to look at a wide area? No. What I recommend is if you're going to a new lake looking to find everything in that thing, set it out wide, find the major stuff, mark it, come back, reduce your coverage area, and blow that detail back up. Does it go down first and then out? So it goes it says it's 60 feet. Side imaging being, say this is our transducer, this is down below, this is the bottom of the lake, this right. is straight down below us, this is right and left. Those beams are more of an arm shape, like a banana shooting out here. Does, okay, because the first time I heard this was that if it's set at 100 feet and you're in 30 feet, it's only going out 70 feet. No. That's not true. No. Okay. This distance from here is 100 foot. From, or from this picture, is 60 is 0 to 60 foot. Okay. From here is from 0 to 13.7. It's 13.7 to the side and 13.7 to the down combined in the water. So if you had a fish at 10 foot, I went 10 foot away from the transducer. Down imaging doesn't know which direction it's going, or side imaging. That beam leaves the transducer, you don't know if it went sideways or down. If the fish is at 10 foot away from that transducer, it's going to be represented about right in this area because that's 13, we're going to be just a hair to the side. Now, the shadow from that fish will tell you how close he is to the bottom. This is going to show our different color palettes and different effects. And I've got several different images. If somebody has questions about what's in the image, this is basically that same rock. This was actually a boat ramp. You can actually see the algae up here on the boat ramp. So we're shooting all the way. The black area here is, the, is actually the water, the bank. So we're actually seeing the algae and the bank. And hit, when it hits the bank, it's gone and it can't return. It's going out of the air. But that's telling you we're getting 180 degrees of cover because we're shooting total to the surface of the water because typically algae don't grow more than a foot deep along on the top of the boat. But the neat thing is look at all the, you can see the concrete slab on there. You can see a rock pile here. You can see this black area here. This is actually a pile of rock. And because that sound wave can't go around corners, it creates a shadow from it. I can tell height of that rock pile by the depth of this goes back. The interesting thing, if you look at those little white dots right there, 
in the black, those are fish suspended off of that rock pile. This is our amber one. Uh, it's, a, it's a brighter return, so your sensitivity, you would want to turn it down just a little bit. But it's going to be strong. Some eyes are better. Adjust your sensitivity to what you want. Amber two is more of an orange color palette. This is showing a lot of logs and stuff on the bottom. One thing about the shadow, you can see the strong return here with the shadow connected. I can tell you that that log is laying on the bottom of the lake. You see a, a white dot like this with a streak like that, that tells me that that is a vertical piece of structure. This is our brown color palette. Showing a rock pile, no full of grass. This dark area is actually a creek channel because it's that sound wave is going around the corner. This is the, the what they call the inverse color palette. And it's a gray color palette. We've got a tree with a school of crappie down here, a break line. But, but all of these different lighting situations, whatever works best for your eyes, uh, people have different personal preferences. I had a friend of mine, I was showing him a blue color palette, said, man, look at this fish, look at this thing. He goes, I can't see it. I flipped the color, I flipped the screen to a different color palette, and he goes, I can see it. He was blue color hmm. And he didn't know. The unit, basically, we found out he was color by looking at the unit. This is what they call gray. It's basically an inverse. On all the other images, your white returns are strong returns. On this one, the white is a soft return, the black will be your stronger return. So your fish are going to show up as black dots and the white dots. This is one that everybody thinks that our engineers uh, were calling days back to Woodstock and wonder what the heck they did. What this, this color palette is a special color palette for people that are looking for hard bottom structure on a, in a soft bottom lake. For example, if you fish the Tennessee River system, shell bay. Uh, lake Erie, you're looking for a rock out in the middle of Lake Erie. So you can run your area coverage wide. You see this red, that's hard bottom. This image is actually shell beds. Here you can see these red dots. When we actually go to the blue color palette, I can show you those muscle shell beds and all the fish around it. And there's actually a rock point over here. But this made that shell bed jump out. And that's a key, like Kevin Van Dam winning those Kentucky Lake tournaments and everybody, Bobby Lane's won it off the shell beds, using hummingbird side imaging. They can use that red color palette, drive down a ledge, find those red spots, mark them, come back, fish in those areas, because those fish really relate on those ledges to those hard bottom structures. Same thing Kevin, when he won the Classic this year, was fishing, he was looking for stumps and shell beds in that backwater area. One first, second, and third were all running humming. And they were all fishing the same area, fishing the same structure. And it'd be interesting if you probably looked at their waypoints, it was probably they probably all had the same stuff on